Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Top in the headlines, the importance of meat to the body. That's the focus of the Northern District 4-H Festival. Kalibishi to host the Grand Uranian 2012 and 11 new cadets officially welcomed into the Dominica Cadet Corps. All these stories and more when National Focus returns. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Eleven recruits of the Pierre Charles Secondary School Cadet Unit are now officially cadet privates. Last Friday, these recruits were officially welcomed into the unit at the 10th enrollment ceremony of that school after three months of intense training. They took the oath of promise on the grounds of the Pierre Charles Secondary School before community members, well-wishers and Inspector David Andrew, who performed the parade inspection. Towards the end of the ceremony, the cadets marched up front to accept their certificates. Unit Commander and Senior Adult Under Officer Bonte Liverpool had this to say to the new privates. Cadets, you are now enrolled. We proudly give you this beret, which will serve you as a perpetual reminder of the traditions of the Dominican Cadet Corps and of the unit to which you belong. I welcome you to this unit. You will always be ready, we will always be ready to help you to keep the promise that you have just made. Hooray for 4-H, hooray for 4-H, somebody in the class is shouting, hooray for 4-H, one, two, three, four, who you gonna shout for? 4-H, for that's you. The primary school students from the North gathered at the Penville Primary School last Friday to participate in the Northern District 4-H Festival. The 4-H program, which has been a fixture of primary schools for a number of years, gives students the opportunity to learn skills in projects such as gardening, rabbit rearing and cooking. Other activities of the 4-H program include public speaking, singing, drama, project demonstrations and community service activities. Last Friday, a number of students with support from parents and teachers displayed their talent and creativity in a number of areas. Students were given the opportunity through a show and tell competition to demonstrate what they learned about meat production and preparation and animal rearing. The students shared how they went about preparing some delicious chicken dishes. Let's take a look. Meat is a very good part of my meal. It just makes me feel so fit and feel. Hey, I love my meat. I love my meat. I love my meat. I love my meat. This is deliciously baked chicken. First, first the chicken was washed and clean in vinegar. Then it was seasoned. Then it was packed in the baking dish and covered with foil, then put in the oven. After it, 25 minutes later, it was taken off from the oven. Then I am brushed with um, barbecue sauce and mustard, then put back in the oven to dry. My name is Kali Hippolit. I represent St. John School. I am here to show you how to make crumbed baked chicken. You will need one, one pound of drumsticks, two eggs, breadcrumbs, and half a cup of milk. First, method season first season the chicken next roll each one in some milk then roll it in the egg battered butter 
after roll the drumsticks in the season breadcrumbs place in a baking dish and put it in the oven bake until juices run clear serve with yam puffs and sweet and sour sauce mm yummy the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School emerged the winner in that competition, leaving the St. John's Primary School in second place. A public speaking impromptu competition also formed part of the day's festival. The students' presentation focused on the nutritive value of meat. The Roosevelt Douglas Primary School came in first, the Penville Government School came in second, while the St. John's Primary School came in third. We present you with a few excerpts from the public speaking competition held last Friday. Meat has a lot of nutritional value, namely proteins, minerals, and vitamins. Therefore, meat is actually good for you in order to maintain good health. Meat and poultry are high in calcium and phosphorus. Calcium and phosphorus, which help build strong bones and teeth, and also build and maintain body tissues. Meat also provides us with iron. Iron helps in the constant supply of oxygen in the blood, which is transported all over the body for the proper functioning of the liver. Just as a transport needs gas to move, so too our body needs vitamins for it to work properly. These vitamins we can get from meat. This will also enable us to grow and develop just as we should, healthy and strong. Eat meat. I thank you. The event was one of several forage festivals taking place across the country this month. Forage coordinator Shirley Alexander is impressed with the work of the students thus far. We want to applaud all of you who have been doing all those because we know we have some clubs on the island. There are about 48 of you and we know that you have been doing a lot. We want to encourage you to continue. We have been having a lot of interesting things happening at those activities. And this is the fourth activity that we are having. Next week, we are going, fifth one. Next week, we are going to have four others. And the parents, teachers, and the wider community have been advised to encourage children to become members of the forage clubs on the island. The advice has come from a youth officer from the Northern District who addressed the community during the staging of the Northern District Forage Festival last Friday. We're expecting the schools to be a little more loyal and contributing towards the movement or the organization of 4 H. I need to actually bring this a little further to tell our community people and the parents that they too need to put their H into this organization. And by the H, we can say their hands into it to encourage our 4 hers to build and do their individual projects as it comes from the school. And of course, to the focus of agriculture as the main concentration in this 4-H um, movement or the 4-H program, let us have the individuals take it as a means of livelihood. There is concern that students involved in the program may become discouraged due to the fact that the students' agricultural projects at the various schools are oftentimes subject to theft by members of the community. The youth officer says this negative trend is hampering the development of the school's 4-H projects. And what I want to say strongly to the parents and the other community people to discontinue the practice of theft, volley, stealing the, the, the school's property when they do their little gardens and their, their, their various projects. For example, the vegetable gardens that we see most of the times when it's near harvest time, the clubs usually meet nothing to actually sell to raise funds and to build their, their skills and experiences in small business or um, agriculture altogether. Um, let, me, let me just say that demonstrating the, the love and the act for forage is encouraging um, our young people to actually build uh, better children in the community, of course a better environment for us to live and to develop our country and even by extension the world at large. 
In other news, the community of Kalibishi is expected to be filled with excitement from the 8th to the 15th of July as residents there host a grand reunion celebration. Activities for the week-long celebration include a cultural extravaganza, a lecture on the history of Kalibishi by Dr. Lennox Honeychurch, an exhibition and short film, a youth encounter, jet ski day, and a fish night. Coordinator of the event, Bernadette Collins, explained the overall objective of the celebrations during her address at the official launch of the event on Sunday. The key message, however, we would like to convey, and certainly what we would like to achieve during the reunion are bringing our communities, bringing our communities and families together, ensuring that the reunion leaves a lasting legacy well beyond 2012 in terms of the future development. That our young people are engaged through the development of a community youth, community youth sports academy. That each family pledge is maintained either via health commitment or educational commitment, for example, a child scholarship. Vice Chairman of the Kalibishi Village Council, Augustus Austri, has high expectations of the outcome of the 2012 reunion celebrations. This reunion is all about Kalibishi. Hence, we, you know, they say locally, you have to put your best foot forward. This is the time. In the recent past, Kalibishi has not enjoyed a lot of hurrahs. We've been experiencing a lot of pain. And so this reunion is a time for us to say, hip, hip, hip. Minister for Social Services, Community Development and Gender Affairs, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, in her address, commented on the theme for the celebrations, uniting our community, let's make it a reality. This theme is most fitting, as this year has been designated Year of the Family. And where there are strong and united families, we can expect to find stronger, more united communities and a stronger, more united nation. The minister reminded residents that they have a lot to be proud of as a community. Kalibishi has registered the fastest growing rate in stay over tourism in Dominica in recent years and you must be congratulated for this. <laughs> Evidence of this is seen in the increasing number of guest houses and hotels here. Additionally, the Kalibishi Lodges has for several years received the award for best accommodation, while the Veranda View Guest House last year received the award for best beach front guest house in the Caribbean. A parliamentary representative for the Paybush constituency, Honorable Murphy Walter, has called for support from residents towards the successful hosting of the Reunion 2012 activities. Are you ready, the people of Kalibish? Because you must come to that realization that the Kalibishi committee cannot do it alone. They have gone through the pains to organize Reunion 2012. But the honor is on you, the people of Kalibishi, to ensure that you are on board. If you are not on board, the efforts, the hard work, the dedication and commitment which they have given, which they have demonstrated, will all go to futility. During Sunday's official launch, residents had the opportunity to hear the official song for the reunion celebrations. <laughs> Let's meet up in the big up reunion committee.
Yeah, 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 yeah,
Mais mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Nous, nous sommes avec Fusson Saint Louis. Au revoir. When we come back, we'll bring you a few upcoming events and the government notices. Do stay with us. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans, and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Time now for a few government notices. All citrus farmers of Tefem, Newfoundland, Grand Fall, Rivia Sirik, Laplane, and Dalis are kindly requested to attend a meeting on Wednesday, June 13 at the Laplane Agricultural Training Center from 4 p.m. This meeting is to discuss the citrus greening disease. Please make a special effort to attend and to be on time. The Ministry of Public Works, Energy and Ports would like to inform the residents of Wharton Waven that there will be a community meeting on Wednesday, June 13 at 5.30 p.m. at the Wharton Waven Resource Center. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss the testing of one of the exploratory geothermal wells. Residents of Wharton Waven, Trafalgar and other villages of the Rosu Valley are especially invited to attend that meeting. All concerned are asked to note the following hurricane shelters and shelter managers for the communities of Grand Bay, Tetmon, and Pichle. In Grand Bay, you have six hurricane shelters, and they are the Grand Bay Roman Catholic Church, where the shelter manager is David St. Charles and his assistant, Christopher Noel. The lower floor of the Grand Bay Community Center, shelter manager Avondale Schillingford, assistant manager Rodney Lockhart. The Grand Bay Pentecostal Church, the shelter manager is Roy Moses. The Grand Bay Church of Christ, the shelter manager there is Mignon Morancy. The Grand Bay Church of God, Seventh Day, where the shelter manager is Lynn John, John Lewis. And the Grand Bay Primary School, shelter manager Simbud Henry, assistant Davidson Henry. In Tetman, the hurricane shelters are the Tetman Resource Center. The shelter manager is Shirley John Lewis. The assistant shelter manager is Claudia Thomas and the Tetman Roman Catholic Church with the shelter manager is Mary St. Warrington. In Pichle, your hurricane shelters are as follows. The Pichle Government School, the shelter manager is Marilyn Leafham. To the house of Joachim Parkett, shelter manager is Joachim Parkett, assistant manager Philomen Parkett. The Pichle Good News Baptist Church, shelter manager Hamlet Bellot, assistant shelter manager Christopher Parkett. Residents of Sufria, Scotset, Gallio and Environs are invited to the 16th inaugural meeting of the Sufria, Scotset, Gallio Village Council scheduled for Wednesday, June 13 at 4.30 p.m. at the Caribantic in Scotset. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Members of the public are asked to take note of the following numbers which could prove useful during hurricane season. The Office of Disaster Management in Jimmit, telephone number 448-8831, hotline 448-7777, website www.odm.gov.dm, email address odm at dominica.gov.dm. The Dominica Met Service, Kinfield Airport, telephone number 449-1990, fax 449-2020, email metofcan at cwdom.dm. The Dominica Met Service, Melville Hall Airport, telephone number 445-7878, fax 445-7849, email METOFFMAR at CWDOM.DM or METOFFICE Met Office at CWDOM.DM. The weather hotline is 447 5555 or visit their website www.weather.gov.dm for updated weather reports. Up next, your tip of the day. 
base your meals on starchy foods. Starchy foods include potatoes, cereals, pasta, rice, and bread. Choose whole grain varieties when you can. They contain more fiber and can make you feel full for longer. Starchy foods contain fewer than half the calories of fat. And that's National Focus. As usual, invite your suggestions or comments. Feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. Or you could visit our website at news.gov.dm. Or you could visit our GIS Dominica pages on YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for watching. Child of the universe, let your spirit fly. You are the special one, and there's no reason why. You're a child of the universe, so climb your mountains high. You are the chosen one. Boy, that fish was well seasoned today, boy. Talking about season, yeah. What is the most important season in Dominica? Mango season, yampe season. Hunting season. Hey, wait. Fishing season. <laughs> Nothing to do with any of these seasons. But you remember what happened to us in 1979? Yes. Remember a few years ago when we bought a grill of fig for a dollar? Yes. I'm talking about the hurricane, hurricane season. season. Mm -hmm. so, so, prepare, prepare, prepare. 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 And so just like your budget or your bank account, Preparation for hurricane or hurricane preparedness is supposed to be part of a natural culture. It has happened, it might happen, maybe it will happen. The way we build our houses, you know, so that you not have to go to somebody's house. You know, during a hurricane, during a hurricane, you know, you know how it is. You People want to bring their cat and, and their, their dog, dog and their you want to go into all it, you cannot ask. You know, and then you, you stay too long, and you got put in your radio low, the bag comes sir. Naturally, if your house is not safe, know, know your, your hurricane, hurricane shelter. shelter. So here's a very important point. Come a little closer. A little closer. Here it is. You can replace your TV or your microwave or your black, blue or raspberry, but you cannot replace your life. Your life is important and it's irreplaceable. To protect yourself, take the necessary precaution because there's only one of you and one of me. And why should you survive a hurricane? I mean, you survive the storm and then go and go be all about and step on a live wire. Are that making sense? It is your right and your responsibility to protect yourself and your family and your property. Remember, I ain't seen no supermarket in Dominica where they're selling spare parts or human body or human parts. No breasts. No thighs. No legs. No wings. <laughs> no, only human parts. Yes, and you only have one of you and it can't complete. So protect yourself. At all times. This is a serious message. From the Office of Disaster Management. Or Office like he was to manage my disaster. In Dominica. This message is going out to all Dominicans to come together and make our destination the best that there is in the Caribbean and by extension the wider world. I am often quoted as saying, Dominica, nature island of the world. And I would like all Dominicans to feel that pride and dignity in our land for ourselves and for generations to come. Make our visitors feel especially welcome. Don't litter. Preserve and conserve our natural resources and the environment. Keep our country clean and green. I am Ian Douglas, the Minister of Tourism. I am Dominica. Are you?